video on a hydrolock and what that sound sounds like. So, I'm here at my bike. This is a 2002 R6. Um, this is the last year they made the carbureted models and it's got a sound that uh, I've actually been trying to capture it on video and I haven't been successful so I'm actually going to recreate the sound and play it um, here. So, if you hear this sound, And you hear that clink, that clink at the end of uh, at the end of like the starter engaging, and it just seems like the engine seizes up. It's because the engine does seize up. Um, now it's not metal seizing on metal. It's actually fluid that's holding um, the engine from spinning around in its in its rotation, like the way that it's designed to rotate. So. The basics of how the inside of an engine works, and I'm just going to explain this, and uh, I know some people are probably going to complain, like, oh, the video's too long, but you can skip through this part. Um, so just skip ahead a minute um, from this point if you don't want to hear all this. But the basics of how the inside of the en engine works is there's there's a piston that, that controls how much volume is inside the engine, so it's connected to a part of an assembly that allows the piston to, to move up and down. As it moves up and down, it changes the the volume of the cylinder that it's in. Like if you could imagine a cup, um, and if you could like raise up the bottom of the cup to where there's less volume inside of the cup, essentially what's happening. Um, so I mean, this is a 600 cc. This is a 600 cc bike. So as a 600 cc motorcycle, it displaces 600 cc's or 600 milliliters of um, of air and fuel. Now, um, since it's a four cylinder. Each cylinder displaces 150 cc's or 150 milliliters of um, of air and fuel as it's as it's running. Now, the comp now just if the compression ratio, average compression ratio for a car is 10 to 1. I'm pretty sure the bike's higher than that. I don't remember what. I, I didn't look it up for this, but motorcycles are usually higher compression. But if it's a 10 to 1 compression ratio, then for 150 milliliters, all you need is. 15 milliliters. Uh, yeah, all you need is 15 milliliters. Well, it's the simplest math equation, but I had to double check myself just so I don't look stupid. Um, all you need is 15 milliliters, more than 15 milliliters of some kind of a solid substance to keep the engine from rotating around in its in its cycle. Um, so with this, since it is carbureted, the carburetors get old, and as they get old, there's seals and things inside that that fail. As those seals fail, the um, the fuel actually ends up seeping down in areas where it's not supposed to and dripping down into the engine. Um, so that's happening on one of my cylinders. So whenever I go to start it sometimes, I'll hear this clank. And sometimes it's a clank and then it'll start because it's just barely enough. And I know it's bad. Um, I've been meaning to fix it. But I, I don't know. I, worst case scenario, then I'll do the big job and and uh, rip apart the engine and replace whatever I have to replace. But um, so whenever there's two, that whenever there's more than about 15 milliliters of or 15 cc's, same thing. Um, whenever there's more than uh, 15 milliliters in the engine, it ends up locking up because the engine can't physically move past that point because it needs. That's when it compresses everything to about. 15 milliliters in that one cylinder. So, um, if there's too much, if there's more than 15 milliliters, it can't move, right? So it's just going to lock up. And when it locks up, that's when you hear that knocking sound, or that set knocking, that, that single knock sound. Um, and that single knock sound is what makes um, valves bend. It's what makes uh, pistons bend. So you can do a quick Google image search on on um, like. Hydrolock damage, hydrolock uh, piston, or you know, hydrolock valve. You know, it'll it'll bend a valve. It'll bend a. Um, it'll probably bend a piston first. But I've seen pistons that have like this this slight S curve to them, just because there's nowhere for the force to go. The starter puts out a ridiculous amount of force, and when you have something that's holding that force back, fluid doesn't compress. Some fluids do a little bit, but not enough to um, to help let the engine go through its its rotation. You know, um, so there's going to be damage. So you're, you're, asking, you're thinking like, okay, well, I don't know how to rebuild my carburetors. One, that's a plug for my next video because 
um, either like after the video that I'm going to show of me taking the bike apart and how to get the carburetors off, I'm going to have a video of me going through the carburetors and explaining what needs to be done just to uh, to repair them, to repair hydrolock, mainly just to clean them. Um, I have other videos on cleaning carburetors, and they're all basically the same inside. If they're motorcycle carburetors, um, they're different from a car carburetor, but. Uh, if you look at one motorcycle video on how to clean your carburetors, or you look at one or two, um, there's a pretty good chance you'll be able to kind of wing it just by doing your own if you don't have this bike. Um, watch the video anyway, or watch one of my other videos on, on going through carburetors. There's mainly three different types, uh, Mikuni, CVK, and uh, Kehin, K-E-I-H-I-N, I think. So uh, those are the main three carburetors that are in almost all bikes that I've worked on, so I haven't seen any other brands other than those three. Um, and between brands, they look very similar, in, even you know, like comparing CVK to Kehin or Mikuni, um, they're, still, they're still pretty similar, there's similar components, similar parts, um, they just look slightly different inside. Uh, so ways to get around it, you're thinking like, okay, well I can't clean carburetors or either that, or um, like you don't trust yourself to do it, or um, you need the bike every day, and you're like, you know what, I need an alternative to taking my bike apart because I need to get around. If that's the case, first of all, before I say this next part, um, the more it happens, the more you get fuel or coolant down inside your, uh, your, your piston, it's just going to drain down inside of your engine. And as it drains down inside of your engine, you're just going to get that fuel or coolant mixed in with your oil, so you're going to have to change your oil more frequently and your parts aren't going to get lubricated as well as they should because you have either fuel deteriorating your oil or you have coolant mixing in with your oil and diluting it and when coolant gets in with oil it makes like a white milky junk stuff that looks like tapioca pudding and um, true, true story that's how they make tapioca pudding they take it from engines that have uh, coolant mixed in with oil um, I'm lying it's not how it, it's not how it happens that somebody out there is probably going to believe me. Like, really? That's how they make? Huh. So I have to say, that's not true. That's not how they make tapioca pudding. And don't eat it. Don't eat the pudding. Um, so other ways that you can, you can kind of cope with it, if you, if you have easy access to your spark plugs, that's the best thing to do. Pull your spark plugs out. Um, turn the engine over a couple times. Just, you know, engage the starter. Press the start button. And you'll just blow the blow the uh, coolant or fuel out of the out of the spark plug holes. Um, you'll want to have your spark away from all of that because, like, your spark plugs away from all of that because that can ignite your um, the fuel that's being blown out of the spark plug holes. Um, but that's that the best way to do it. If you're stuck somewhere, take the spark plugs out, engage the starter, blow all that fuel or coolant out, and then uh, start the uh, start the bike back um, after you put the obviously after you put the spark plugs and uh, spark plug wires all that back on um, but that's the best way to do it other things that you can do if you have a fuel pack cock then whenever you go to shut off the bike shut off the fuel pack cock and then let the bike run until all the fuel has been evacuated in the carburetors it's all been burned up it gets sucked into the engine and it, if uh, your fuel pump or if you have a gravity fed uh, fuel delivery system on your motorcycle which doesn't have a fuel pump then you would just have a pet cock and when you shut that off the bike can only run on however much fuel is in the carburetors and until that and whenever that's all burned up then that, then you're good um, you can drain the carburetors out individually every time you shut it off uh, obviously if it's gravity fed you'll still want to shut the pet cock off because uh, you could still get some seepage. The gravity fed uh, pet cocks are um, they have a vacuum, there's a, so there's a little vacuum hose that goes to the engine that whenever there's engine vacuum, it opens up the pet cock and then the fuel flows in. So, um, on older motorcycles, that actually leaks in. So, you can still get uh, fuel in your, in your carburetors just by letting it sit, even though your fuel pet cock is turned off. So, uh, that, that's another thing. Um, or, um, one thing I've been actually wanting to do on this bike because it's so hard to get to the fuel pack on, it's actually right behind the frame. 
on the bottom side of the tank and you can see like if you look in from you know the, the top of the tank you can barely see the edge of it or if you look up from the bottom of the frame you can see the side of it but you can't put your hand on it to turn it which would be really nice especially when I want to let the, sit, let the bike sit for a week or oh, sorry for a month or so that way I don't have to worry about that that fuel just sitting in my carburetors um, just because it's just gonna you know gel up or you know eat, up, eat away my uh, the rubber and things that's inside of the um, things that are inside of the uh, carburetors. So obviously that's bad. Um, so what I've been wanting to do to get around to that is install just a little fuel pump cutoff switch that I can put underneath my back seat or somewhere else, like somewhere kind of out of the way, um, like kind of tucking up underneath the frame or something like that. And I can just hit the fuel cutoff switch and that'll shut off the, I, I would put it on the um, on the ground wire coming off of the fuel pump so that shuts off the fuel pump it kills the ground of the fuel pump and the fuel pump can't work without a ground so it just it shuts off the fuel pump and the rest of the bike will still be running it'll just run on however much fuel is in the uh, in the carburetors so um, those are really the only ways that you can you can you can really deal with having a um, a, a vehicle that has hydrolock um, other things like one thing I've had to do on this bike a couple times, and I've had a little bit of success, is rocking the bike backwards while it's in, while it's in gear. Because when you rock it backwards, the engine is actually spinning in reverse, and it's not easy to do, but it can be done. Um, but a little warning with that: there's actually some manuals, like repair manuals, that say not to spin the engine in in, a, in reverse rotation from what it's designed to spin in. Um, personally, I don't really care when I read that. I know it probably has something to do with the tensioner, or it might jump a tooth or something like that. So I mean, I'll, with caution, I would still do it, but I wouldn't advise anybody else to do it. So I've just kind of taken a risk there, like, well, I kind of want to spin it backwards one, one degree instead of spinning it forward, um, you know, all the way back around, or, or 720 degrees, because crank spins at 720 degrees while the camshaft spin at, at uh, 360, so. Um, but that's really the only things that you can do to uh, to get around hydro locks on a motorcycle. Um, but after you get the problem fixed, and if you're going to deal with the problem, then you're going to have to change your oil um, more frequently than you would like to. Because uh, as that fuel or coolant drifts down into the engine, it is going to get down into your crankcase where the oil is, where the oil is stored. And as that happens, then, well, it's just going to mix in with your oil dilute the oil or degrade the oil or both so um, anyway follow on to my next videos though I'm, I'm actually I'm gonna do a video on uh, taking this bike apart probably time-lapse I'm not sure I haven't decided yet um, I might do like a time-lapse with like a little commentary voiceover thing um, it's gonna be that and then I'm gonna have a video on uh, on actually taking the carburetors apart and cleaning them, doing everything I need to do, um, mainly to share the video as how to clean carburetors on a 98-2002 Yamaha R6, which is what this is. Um, not to be confused with the YZF600R, which I actually have a video on how to clean the carburetors on that too. So, um, what was I saying? Uh, so there's going to be my next two videos, so if you want to continue on and watch like how to take this apart to get the carburetors off, and if you want to follow along, the, the things that I'm going to replace are my uh, my needle jets, so, um, or sorry, not needle, uh, float needles. So I'm going to change my float needles and I'm going to check how, like, how the floats um, operate, if they're all, oper if they're all, like, moving the same, or if there's a hole in one, or, <laughs> hole in one, that's funny, like golf, except it's not golf, I laugh. Um, so, um, so I'm going to inspect it, inspect it really well and just make sure it's not one of those things. Uh, anyway, continue on to the next video. Like, subscribe, comment. Um, positive comments only. I usually delete the negative comments, so you can put them up. I'll just delete it later. Um, that being said, people are probably just going to put negative comments. I shouldn't have even said that. Anyway, so thanks for watching, though. Um, I hope this was informative. 
check out my other videos. I have stuff on performance cars and uh, engine management, tuning basics. Uh, also, also, if you wanted to check out like the link that's in, that's been at the bottom of this video, hour9racecraft.com is my webpage. Um, I have a lot of helpful information, things like that, on there, and it, I'm just gonna keep building on it, really, um, and adding whatever I can whenever I think about it. So, uh, so thanks for watching, though, and uh, hope you guys have. I hope you guys aren't having this problem, at least to the extent that I'm having it. It does get to be a little bit difficult because you can't do a rolling start. I mean, you're not, you know. Um, but uh, that, that's all I have. So thanks for watching, and uh, God bless. Kickstand down so make sure that I don't lay the bike over and then it falls down. That would be bad on video. And this would turn into a fail video instead of a, um, a helpful YouTube video. It's, it's kind of a technical thing to explain just uh, just by just by talking. So so uh, distractions, distractions, distractions. Um, if this part of the video is still there, then I forgot to edit it out. I'm gonna wait a bit. Wait, wait, wait. Gather my thoughts. Basically, what it is is it's a phenomenon known as a hydrolock. That was cheesy. I know. Do stuff on the fly. I don't know. It doesn't always come out that cool.